WIFO FM in Jessa, Big Dog Country Radio, 105.5 FM. It is now time for the world famous Butch and Bob Show, brought to you by O'Quinn Associates, Murphy Builder Supply, Vans Barbecue, and First Southern Bank. Are you looking for an insurance company that you can call and talk to a live person? Are you looking for an insurance company where you can walk in and talk to an agent? Are you looking for an insurance company that offers multiple companies so they can try and get you the best rate? If you said yes to any of these, then you need to call or come by. Oakwind and Associates Insurance Financial Services. We offer multiple companies so we can find the best fit for you. Give us a call at 385-1000 or stop by our office at 212 South Fair Street right here in Jessup. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. When it comes to barbecue, Vans Barbecue and Jessup is the place to be. A small family-owned business located at 1876 on the Savannah Highway. Vans Barbecue has lunch and dinner specials. Stop by or call to make an order. The number to call, 427-3358. Vans Barbecue's new manager is Sarah Van. Vans Barbecue offers potato salad, coleslaw, baked beans, and don't forget their delicious mac and cheese. Also, check out their shrimp plates, the best in town. Yes, when it comes to the barbecue, head to Vans Barbecue, locally owned and operated. Stop by and tell them the big dog sent you. Once again, the number to order, 427-3358. Hi, I'm Raymond Brown. And I'm Mandy Yeomans. At First Southern Bank, our customers are like family. As a locally owned community bank, we're dedicated to helping our clients succeed. We have loans for every need, whether it's personal or business. We have lines of credit, auto loans, equipment loans, and of course, we offer mortgages. Stop by our bank or call us at 912-588-1010 and see how First Southern Bank can help you. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. The world famous Butch and Bob Show. World famous Butch and Bob Show right here on WIFO. 105.5 FM and Jessa Big Dog Country Radio. Bob, take it away. Okay, before we get to State Senator Blake Tillery, just want to remind people Vans Barbecue has a big special coming up on Thursday. All you can eat boiled shrimp, $19.95 with two sides. Also, all you can eat fried shrimp, $23.99 with two sides. These specials begin this Thursday, this week at 4 p.m. And check it out. All you can eat boiled shrimp with two sides, $19.95. And all you can eat fried shrimp with two sides, $23.99. Again, that's this Thursday beginning at 4 p.m. at Vans Barbecue. On the phone with us is State Senator Blake Tillery. It's Tuesday's with Tillery. Crossover day yesterday, Senator. Uh, I'm sure it was a busy day. Uh, I'm sure you got all the highlights, so just run down <coughs> what stands out for you on a crossover day. Well, one is a, a late night, and uh, we got, uh, we were talking with uh, Bush just a minute ago. We finished up about 11.30, finally getting to the house. And, um, so, a lot of stuff happened. A lot of bills died. It's not very common for you to see folks put bills on the floor that aren't going to make it. <clears throat> but this year, our, our leadership, um, Lieutenant Governor Jones and others said, hey, listen, uh, vote to vote, debate to debate. Let's put a bill out there and see what happens. So you've seen a lot of bills go down just this past week. City of Buckhead bill, which in our area really doesn't get any media play, but up here gets a ton. Uh, it, it died on the floor. I voted for it. I let those folks have their votes, especially given what's going on. Um, although I am very hesitant, usually to split cities. You saw some other votes go down. The sports betting vote went down not just once, but twice. And then I, it never even got called up on the House side. So things that folks have been emailing me about, a lot of those are now completely off the table. Um, they just didn't make it over to begin with. We did get a lot of bills out, though. <clears throat> some that probably matter back home. Um, the state budget obviously matters a lot to us, matters a lot to me. Uh, we got it across the table sitting on the governor's desk now. It came through the House and the Senate. The, the amended budget will pick up the general budget starting this week. Um, bills about uh, transgender issues, uh, basically bans that the doctors can't do surgery on children under 18 um, and certain hormone uh, medications that are irreversible. Uh, those, those were banned by the Senate. It goes over to the House for consideration over there. Uh, 
um, the school choice bill, which you've seen students get locked in to failing schools, it passed with an amendment that says, hey, this is only available if your school's failing. In other words, it's in the bottom 25% of schools, which I think is a protection that a lot of folks in our area wanted. Um, if your school is in the bottom 25% of schools, it brings up the question of, why, why would we not want parents to be able to try to move their kids to a better position? So, uh, and then also a, an accreditation bill, which is going to seem small, but it's so, so huge. You've seen in some of this, the national standards concerning education, but we've seen accreditation groups basically threaten the school systems locally and say, hey, if you don't include things like uh, ESG and, and other types of teachings that don't necessarily flow very well for us in Wayne County, then we're going to dock or knock your accreditation points. We saw that happen in Forsyth County, one of our best school systems that has a great um, rating concerning uh, uh, graduation rates, high school graduation rates, moving kids to college. So they had their accreditation challenge simply because they weren't teaching uh, what uh, some folks would call some type of, of woke uh, ideology. Um, so what we did is pass the bill that said, hey, listen, if you're going to grade schools in Georgia and deal with their accreditation, you need to look at how their outcomes are in education and how their finances are run. But that's the only things you got to be looking at. Uh, so uh, a lot of big bills passed, some that probably haven't gotten a whole lot of play yet that I think can have uh, a lot of impact. And, and really, for what most of the folks in our area believe, I think it was a pretty successful day. And just joining us, State Senator Blake Tiller, you're on the phone with us. And the way I understand it, you can explain it better than anybody. If a bill doesn't pass and cross every day, the chance of it becoming law is slim to none. Is that correct? It's very slim, uh, at least as that bill number. So take a, say it's Senate Bill 1 and say it was about, uh, let's use sports voting. If it didn't make it through one chamber, Senate Bill 1 is dead. Now the language in Senate Bill 1 about sports voting could be amended to another bill as it goes across the chamber. So while things are dead, they're never really dead until we finally die. And again, uh, how many more days left in the session? It goes all the way to the end of the month, is that correct? Yeah, 12 more session days, but those will draw out and get a little bit more, there will be a few more gaps in between uh, for the next few days as um, we work to get the big budget done uh, by the 29th. And when are the bills finally signed and then they go to the governor's desk? So how does that work? Yeah, so once it passes both chambers, just like your civics class, uh, it'll it'll head to the governor's desk. The governor then would have 40 days to decide whether or not he wishes to veto the bill. He, if he signs it, it passes. If he doesn't veto it, it passes uh, by Georgia law. So we're hitting the, the final stretches here. When you work on the budget closely, is it pretty much set in stone? Is it still has to be tweaked some, or what's the word on the budget? So the amended budget is done. Right? It's on the governor's desk now, but the... FY24, still a ton of work to be done. Um, that's where I'll be spending most of the day, uh, reading back agency requests, senator requests, requests from back home in the district. Um, and it's, it's a big budget. It's $32 billion, a lot of money, a lot of state money. And we had the federal fund that's right at 50. Um, but when you consider that you're going to spend 33% of that on K-12, you're going to spend 54% as a whole on education and you're going to spend 23% on health. Um, you really only deal with the fringes after you fund education and health care. As you mentioned, it was a long night last night, so what's on the agenda for today? <clears throat> Great question. There was a rules meeting in between some of our meetings last night because of how many bills are still on the floor. I haven't looked at the rules calendar yet. But we go in today at 1 o'clock, and we'll probably be there till probably about 4 or 5 today um, with committee meetings then following because you've got to start meeting on house bills. Are st people still visiting the state capitol? Have you seen anybody recently from Wayne? Yeah, we've had uh, a bunch of folks. had um, some folks from Long County, the new economic development guy from Long came um, last week, came up. Uh, a bunch of uh, ag farmers, uh, cattle farmers were there yesterday. But no, I didn't see anybody from Wayne. They're probably busy working. Um, and then we had several pages, but most of those came from, like, Montgomery, uh, in Toombs County yesterday, the pages that were up there visiting. So uh, this week we know all the county commissioners are coming up. To, today's Wednesday, right? Yeah. No, today's Tuesday. Tuesday's Tuesday. Tuesday with Tillery. Tuesday with Tillery. 
How could you forget that? I've known you only got about three hours of sleep last night, Blake. <laughs> <laughs> I should have been able to remember that one, shouldn't I? Right. Um, the county commissioners are coming up Wednesday uh, from around the state, all over our area. Um, so they'll be up here Wednesday, and they'll, they'll have a breakfast on Thursday. So look forward to catching up with those guys about what's going on back home and seeing what we got to do to finish these last 12 days. Blake, I want to ask you a couple of questions. Um, I always like to ask why on certain things instead of just knowing what the, the facts are. Why did the uh, Senate uh, decide not to give the Buckhead residents th the opportunity to vote to see if they wanted to remove themselves from Atlanta and become their own city? Yeah, well, uh, listen, so four years ago, I actually had a constitutional amendment to limit the number of cities. It seemed like we do limit the number of counties already in the state constitution. And it seemed like every year we were drawn into another side about another city that um, just created another level of, of another taxing level of government. So I had an amendment that did that, a bill that, uh, a state constitutional amendment and a bill underlying legislation. And those both almost passed. The folks were already predisposed to be tired of dealing with the city fights. Usually they're local issues that get drugged to the state level. Uh, but Buckhead was a little bit different. The, their group seemed to be well organized, uh, and then the push behind it was, was crime. So when I'm here during session, I have a, a room I rent in a house um, in, in Buckhead. And six years ago, I would have gone running on the belt line here and not had a problem, not considered it a problem. I would get up at 5.30 and go run the sidewalks on Peach Street. I won't do that now. Um, you have people who are now having gas valet <laughs> back to the days where it was a full service station because folks are nervous about getting out of their car just to pump gas. So Man. the Buckhead vote was a little bit different. It was really um, a lot, lot more uh, focused on what's going on with crime in, in this community that used to be a whole lot safer. The so why why did the Senate not give them the opportunity to vote? What was, yeah. your, what was the reasoning saying, you know, we're going to tell you you can't have your own, you can't vote to have your own city? Yeah, well, there's 56 of us, so you got to get 29 to pass. 23 were Democrats, and they were locked down in a position. So if you lost more than uh, the Republican majority, it's just this, or 33. So if you lose four Republicans, you're not going to pass the bill anyway. Right. And on this one, <clears throat> you, you had a whole lot more than that. There were some things in the bill that were a little bit problematic that I overlooked, that I voted for to allow them to vote, um, that, that were problematic that I overlooked. Like, And I overlooked knowing it was there, but I thought the end was better than um, the means justified the end. Uh, they, the city of Atlanta was going to have to sell the fire stations for like $1,000 and the parks for $1,000. They're obviously worth more than that. Oh, yeah. So some folks had a financial issue with it. Okay. Some were concerned about the bonds of the city of Atlanta. Um, you know, those bonds still have to be paid, but they have less of a tax base to do it. How's that going to affect the city? And then the other side, uh, they thought that there were some folks that thought it was a racial overtone. I don't think it was a racial overtone. The city of Buckhead would be majority African American. Um, yeah. But there were some folks who thought that, and that pulled them out to do it. Okay. Um. Well, it's just interesting uh, on that because I know that Buck has been trying to, to push for that, but it hasn't gone through. And I was just wondering why. And, I, you know, you, you touched on some of those issues right there. Yeah. Uh, and, and also remember this. It's very hard to pass a bill. It is so much easier for a bill to die. you got to get 29 affirmative votes to pass it. You just have to have less than 29. It's not, it's not as easy because folks are busy on the floor. Folks are busy with a constituent group. But they're simply just not in the chamber because they're taking a picture with the Wayne County SSA. Well, then they don't count towards the 29 of passing. So passing a bill is much, much more difficult than, than defeating a bill. And I thought the new mayor of uh, Atlanta had uh, uh, promised the re uh, citizens and residents of Buckhead that he was going to increase patrols there in the Buckhead area. Has that happened in, within the, the year now that he's been in? <clears throat> they have opened a police precinct, but there's differing... Um, opinions about how it's been staffed and run okay so all right well you know we all go to atlanta ever so often and you know buckhead's always been that uh, you know 
uh, area that everyone really knows about up there. So I, I was just wondering, I want, since I had you on the phone this morning, I wanted to ask you. Bob, you got any other questions or anything for uh, Senator Tillery? One final thing I read a lot on the crossroad there, one thing I didn't see, we talked uh, a couple weeks ago about the uh, increase in the pack of cigarettes tax. Has that died? I never saw that bill, so I think it was in the House. I'm not sure if it crossed over. I'll find out more today. Okay. Um, I just didn't I read a lot, but I didn't see anything on that, so just curious. The other, the other bill I've got to go look at is uh, Representative Meeks' bill, Stephen Meeks' bill, about truck weights. We were looking forward to seeing that on the Senate side, um, and i got to go check this morning and see if it got out. All right. Well, we appreciate you being here on Tuesdays with Tillery. Sorry it was such a late night. Uh, maybe get you get catch a nap today. <laughs> yeah, maybe, right. maybe, maybe at some point. But uh, no, thank y'all for the time. <laughs> All uh, right, Senator, you have a great yeah. day. I know you got a lot of uh, important work to do, and we look forward to talking to you next Tuesday. Thanks. Y'all have a good one. All right, take care. Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO, 105.5 FM in Jessup World Famous Butch and Bob Show right here on WIFO. We got guests in the green room. They'll be on the air in just a moment. Stay tuned. South Georgia weather. Here's your WIFO forecast. Patchy fog early, but we're mostly sunny. Northwest breeze gusting to 20 highs, mid 80s. Mostly clear around 50 for tonight. Sunshine upper 60s tomorrow. Then Thursday, mostly sunny, high mid 60s. And Friday, mostly cloudy, chance of showers, then showers likely, slight chance of thunder in the afternoon, high low 70s. Georgia Chief Meteorologist John Weatherby in the Georgia 811 Weather Center. Contact 811 before you dig. This is Pastor Brad from First Baptist Little Whiskey. We'll take a moment about you and your family to our 17th annual Wild Game Dinner on March 18th at 5 o'clock. Tickets are $10 a piece when we're going to have all kind of food for you and your family to try and sample. Everything from rattlesnake, catfish, deer, and many, many more. Plus all the sides that go along with it. With your $10 purchase of a ticket, you'll not only get a great meal, but you'll be entered to win Shotguns, rifles, a guided bird hunt, coolers, and many, many more. You can purchase those tickets on our Facebook page, or you can buy those tickets at the door. Also, we're going to have a short, encouraging message for our community and some great music as well. So come out and join us March 18th at 5 o'clock for our annual Wild Game Dinner at First Baptist Little Whiskey. And as we like to say here, Welcome home. 105.5 FM and Jess of Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO. We continue on with the world-famous Butch and Bob Show. Taste of Wayne is coming to Jessup and Wayne County in a few weeks. we got Dina Bennett here from the Chamber of Commerce. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm great. How are y'all? We're doing good. good. It was a long night last night for us. But, you know, the Wayne County baseball game went nine innings, and then, of course, we both got to get up early. And so we're like Senator Tillery. We're kind of dragging. Dragging. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I understand. Well, we're glad you're here. Oh, uh, so, yeah. You, you wonder when the alarm goes off at 345 in the morning, like, oh, okay. Oh, I got to get up. <laughs> I mean, nobody else can do the job. I got to get up. <laughs> so That's at 345, right. that alarm goes off, and I get ready and come into work, and here we are doing our thing. Yep. So what's going on? What you, what's the thing going on at Chambers? Well, we've got, we're busy. We've got a lot going on. Uh, we are going to talk about Taste of Wayne a little bit. I've got Miss Jody Lewis with me this morning. And um, before we get to Taste of Wayne, I just want to mention a couple of ribbon cuttings that we have scheduled. Sure, go ahead. Um, of course, I've been hearing the ads on the radio um, from Harris Ace Hardware, but we are doing their ribbon cutting and grand opening on Friday at uh, noon, this Friday, March the 10th at noon. So we're excited to have that ribbon cutting and see the new store. I don't know if y'all been in there, but it is gorgeous. Marvelous. Yes, yes. So we're excited. Again, that's this Friday at noon, Harris Ace Hardware. And then the following Friday on March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, we're going to celebrate a ribbon cutting for Insta Photos by Pamela. And that is Dr. Pam Schumann. She has a um, photo uh, business where she travels and takes, uh, she'll, she does parties, events, weddings, graduations, a whole, and she has got all the equipment that you can imagine that you can need to, to take some fun photos for your event. So we're going to celebrate that on March 17th 
at 4 p.m. at the chamber office. So, okay. again, that's Insta Photos by Pamela. So we're excited, always excited to have ribbon cuttings because it, it means new business. That's it means right. growing businesses. So um, we're, we're all, always excited to do that. And it seems like we've had several of those in the last few weeks. So um, always, always excited, excited to see that. Yep. So, But we are going to talk about Taste of Wayne today. We have um, Taste of Wayne scheduled for Thursday, April the 13th. From 6 to 10 p.m. at Coastal Pines Technical College. And this year is uh, presented by Marshland Credit Union. So, hi, Marshland. Jody from Marshland. We got a lady there yes, <laughs> from Marshland. Good morning, Jody. And be a part of the community. We've been growing really fast, so this is a great opportunity for us. Okay. Yes. So, we're excited to announce. Um, of course, Taste of Wayne, and our theme this year is a night at the races, and I think we've already kind of revealed that. There's stuff going around social media and emails going out, but we are. Um, it's going to be a Kentucky Derby type theme, um, so a night at the races, horse racing. So we're going to have our typical uh, live and silent auction, uh, raffle tickets, um, that sort of thing that we do every year, but we are also going to have three horse races uh, during the night of the what, event. In the parking lot or what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's actually, um, we'll be showing them up on the, the big screens in the room. So um, it'll be, it's really cool. We've, we've had the opportunity to view a sample race and you really feel like you're you know it's yeah, do real you, do you it's watch a video it or you feel like you're on the horse or is it no both? No, no, no 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 you're watching so you feel no, like you're I mean actually is, watching the, ho- the you're horse watching race. the horse yes. race and this yes. is something uh, that is uh, kind of packaged together that yes. y'all put up on the screen yes. for events like yes. this yes so we'll have three okay. different horses uh, races throughout the night that you can um bet and many, i use that how many horses are in a race do you know? um i think there's 12, 12 horses per race per race yes and you just pick which horse that That's you think right. will win so can we you have, do win place and show like yes, you do in the derby yes all right yes we're gonna have the whole nine well, I know yards this is perking yes. up bob's interest over here. <laughs> yes yes so of course we'll be betting and I, when i say betting it's for funny money it's for yep. tickets for a chance to win prizes so right. we're not doing actual away funny money that's right we're not doing actual betting because we can't do that but it'll be a lot of fun so we're do you excited have backgrounds on the horses we, is there like a, something you read yes, there you can read hear, about the horse yep. and, and yeah, these it, are actually races that have been run that's right and now you just got to pick that's out which right. horse that's right in place to show yep. first second all yep. that kind of good stuff we'll have the program it'll tell you all about the different horses and you know their success what they've how many races they've let me help you out, Dina. Tell I'll me. G- I'll give you the phrase. It's for entertainment purposes only. There you go. <laughs> entertainment purposes only. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Bob has to use that a lot. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it is. But yes, it's really it's a, it's exciting. It's a it's a it's it's a clips from previous races. Previous races. Yeah. All right. So yeah. you're sitting up there in the stands and you're watching That's it. Right. You know, like you do normally when you're watching the Kentucky Derby. Yeah. Now, are y'all gonna wear hats? We are. We're going to have a... Uh, You're going to have them ladies well, gonna have your fancy hats on? We are. That's I'm right. not. Right. I oh, probably Jody looks will. excited about that. Jody I'm super will. excited about it. <laughs> Jody can wear her hat. We are encouraging our ladies to wear hats because we are going to have a hat contest. Oh, you are? Huh? Yes. So um, okay. that'll be exciting. We want to see all the... All the fun hats. That's hats I will not wear a hat. Derby. I'll look like a boy in a hat with my You look like hair. a boy with a hat? I yeah. think so. So right, I'll, so I'll bypass the hat. But okay. I'm going to pull it off. Yeah. yeah. Not everybody has to wear it, but if a lady wants to wear those fancy hats like you see at the Derby, you yes, can. Yes. Yeah. So we're looking forward to it. We're, yeah. Yeah. You so. can tell when you watch the Kentucky Derby, those uh, ladies there with those hats, they just, they love getting dolled up for That's you. That's right. Know? They're not really there they really to watch the horse ready. race. <laughs> There's a race? They're yeah. there for the entertainment. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> That's right. So, so yeah. we are excited Derby about that. Derby night at Taste of Wayne. That's right. But the most but, important mm-hmm. part or the p- most important thing about Taste of Wayne is uh, we do get to showcase some of our local vendors or our local restaurants, caterers, bakers, that sort of thing. So right, right now uh, we still have a couple of openings, but we've got um, – 11 uh, vendors, I think, that are signed up. I just want to go through real quick and just uh, list those. And um, we have Hog and Bones, Cerchero's, She Bakes 912, Smoke Show Competition Barbecue and Catering, 
Wayne County High School Culinary Program. We're excited to have them this year. We have not ever had the culinary program from the high school, so we get to see. I didn't know they had one. Yes, it's exciting. Cool. Uh, Brothers Seafood, Nang's, Union Station Brewery Company, Bridges and Bows Beverage Bar, Tequila's Mexican Restaurant, and Garcia Brothers Concessions. Okay. So we do, like I said, we have a couple of spots open, and um, we have extended that deadline if anybody is interested in being a vendor. Um, we've extended that. Two more f- restaurants. Two or more food spots. Devices, That's whatever. right. Yeah. So mm-hmm. let us know by this Friday, the 10th, and we can definitely get you in. So, um, we're, I like we're that taste of way you walk in, but you waddle out, you know, because you're eating <laughs> <That's>, so much. <laughs> that's exactly right. That that's true. exactly right. That so, um, we're accepting, you know, donations from our local businesses for our um, auction items as well. Um, our community really steps up and shows out every year for our taste of way, and we have tons of wonderful auction items um that we uh, put out each year so we're excited about that so um we've already started getting some of our sponsors i'll let yes. jody kind of give a shout out to our sponsors yes definitely well of course i want to shout out to marshland credit union for mm-hmm. being our presenting sponsor um we also have our toast sponsor which will be for our cups that we will have for sale mm-hmm. at the event um that is going to yeah, be first horizon sale? they are for sale they're yeah, you said cups? Cups, oh, yes, okay. so like our beverage cups. Right. Um, in the past, we've done like wine glasses and that sort of thing to kind of mm-hmm. take with you, and I think we're kind of like, everybody's like, I don't need another wine glass. So we actually have a mint julep cup. Oh, so cool. So mint julep is the drink of the Kentucky Derby. Of course, we won't be serving the mint juleps because no. that's got some liquor in it. We'll just stick with beer and wine. But anyway, so um, really nice cups that everybody can Yes. All right. Go ahead, Jay. And that was by First Horizon. Um, our award ceremony is presented by Neesmith Chevrolet. Our live auction will be Boykin Steel and Crane. Our silent auction is Fraser Appliance and Refrigeration. Um, our raffle, which we have tickets. Um, if you need any, you can get by go by the chamber office and pick some up or you can get them at the event that is oakwin and associates and then we have our three horse races is there by georgia power murphy's builder supply and interstate credit union and we do have some opportunities still available for some business sponsors so if your business is interested in being a sponsor let us know yeah back to the raffle yes we do have raffle tickets on sale our um our board members, our, our Taste Wayne committee, they're floating around throughout the community. We have some at the chamber office. They're $10 a ticket. Um, we will sell them through the night of the event. We will do four drawings during uh, Taste of Wayne. You do not have to be present to win, so that's always a, a plus to, in selling those tickets. But we will be giving away $250 five hundred dollars seven hundred fifty dollars and a thousand dollars cash so yeah, it's cool. a really uh really great opportunity to uh to support taste of wayne and have a chance of winning some cash yeah. tickets are on sale chamber members uh fifty dollars uh, non-chamber members is 75 dollars um you come in you get to taste all the wonderful foods that's there um we'll have beer and wine um available and enjoy the entertainment. yeah enjoy the entertainment Okay, uh, lots of fun coming up on Taste of Wayne. And once again, tickets are available at the Chamber of Commerce. And the date on it, once again, is? Thursday, April 13th. Okay. 6 o'clock at Coastal Pines. All right, always a lot of fun. Always. Always a lot of fun. And the Derby uh, competition is going to make it even more fun this yes. year. All yes. Right. Yes. Definitely. Anything else, ladies? Can't think of anything. Bob, any questions or comments for Jody or Dina this morning? <laughs> it's all. always a fun time. Always. It is fun. Okay. Yep. We appreciate so where it. where do you find stuff like that to to put races up on on screens around the? Uh... So we actually uh, ordered this kit from a company called uh, A Night at the Races. They're down in West Palm Beach, Florida. Okay, A Night. Let me write this down because yeah. I might want to go ahead and order that. Myself. <laughs> <laughs> And they have everything. Oh, I like it from the chamber in LA. Yeah. <laughs> they have everything for you. How did Butch pick all of them correctly? I know, right? <laughs> um, yeah, it's a, it's a whole package deal. They send you the races. They send you the 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 funny money, the, the, the whole thing, sheets huh? to calculate the odds and all of that good stuff. So That is amazing. Mm-hmm. A night of the races. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Good, good. Yep. Have so, you all received that information yet? We have not. You have not, so. No. It doesn't matter whether you know in advance. That's you don't right. Know what, you don't know what y'all going to get. <laughs> we don't. We don't. They probably have hundreds and hundreds of races to choose from. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Oh, that's great. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, a lot of fun. We're looking forward to it, as always. And always good eating. Always. Yeah, always good eating to taste of wine. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. All right. So, yep. Well, I think that we're going to have you all along a couple more times yep. before the event. So we look we forward will. to seeing you all in a couple of weeks to give us an update on Taste of Wine. Sounds good. Thank you all for 13th. having us. Thank you so much. All right. Yep. Bob, anything else? I just want to, again, plug Vans Barbecue. has all-you-can-eat boiled shrimp, nineteen ninety-five with two sides. All-you-can-eat fried shrimp, twenty-three ninety-nine with two sides. It all begins this Thursday at 4 o'clock at Vans Barbecue. It's going to be so just Thursday, right? This coming Thursday. It starts Thursday. this Thursday. I think it's going to run for the weekend, but it oh. starts Thursday. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Vans Barbecue. 105.5 FM and Jess of Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO, World Famous Butch and Bob Show, brought to you by O'Quinn Associates, Murphy Builder Supply, Vans Barbecue, and by First Southern Bank.